the spring of the great COVID-19 pandemic, the peaceful existence of my bird feeder came under attack by the Shirley and Red Clan of Fox Squirrels. Countermeasures were undertaken and it was game on. As the days drifted into summer, Shirley and Red departed, leaving a teenage squirrel named Wimpy in charge. He earned his name as a young squirrel, afraid to take on the bird feeder defense system developed to discourage Shirley and Red. But in time, as he matured, he became bolder. The rotatable shield slanted forward and was flexible, which made it easy to use as a ramp. So I rebuilt it with a stiff wooden frame that was vertical. Wimpy chose to jump slightly to the side of the shield's balance point, and it rotated quickly, as designed. Score one for the physicist. On his next attempt, he rotated the shield into the deer fence, but that was a relatively easy fix for me. That twitching tail signals he's ready to crank up the action, and he really goes for it. As he pushes off from the top, the plastic shield snaps off, and he is on his way to the feeder. Rather than fixing the plastic shield, let's see if he can navigate its irregular geometry. To his squirrel brain, it looked like the right side was a good landing point, but it is off the center line of the shield. When there is food to be had, squirrels can be very persistent. So there is a method in his madness, and on his fourth try, he rides it out, and it's time for a squirrel breakfast of black oil sunflower seeds. While he is enjoying the bird seed, I'm designing the next version. How about a rotatable plastic bottle to keep him from launching off the horizontal support? Like many of the design improvements, this one initially showed real promise and he had no immediate solution. Instead, he took an alternative route, taking advantage of the basket hanging below the feeder that was used to catch discarded seeds. Of course, if you jump on, you have to jump off, and the deer fence netting makes a great landing point. I removed the basket, so now his only option was to go up and over. The local California scrub jay was no fan of Wimpy and frequently let him know. Wimpy's training program had prepared him well and he was using his squirrel brain to calculate how to defeat this latest setup. This time he went straight over, right on balance, and made it look easy. So I had one more idea. If one bottle was good, maybe two would be better. Squirrels have incredible jumping ability, and when pressed, they can jump five feet vertically and at least seven feet horizontally. So in the end, he just jumped over both bottles to the top of the shield and before it rotated, jumped onto the steel channel. Then just to let that cyclotron physicist know who was in charge, he did some flexing. Well, it was the end of the road for this ungainly looking contraption. Not only had Wimpy defeated every version, but I was constantly getting heat from the wife about how this kludge was an ugly scar on her fancy garden. So I negotiated a new location with the promise of putting up something more elegant and hopefully more effective. The first visitor was a morning dove who found the new design more to its liking. Wimpy was soon on the case, but first he had to deal with those morning doves.
The one and five eighths inch diameter pole was small enough for Wimpy to shinny up like a kid in PE class. This was no surprise, and I had ordered an Autobahn approved squirrel shield, which was due in in about a week. In the meantime, could a simple plastic bottle mounted on the pole keep Wimpy from eating the bird seed? On foggy mornings, the pole was slippery, the plastic bottle baffling, and those morning doves were irritating. Even if Wimpy could push the bottle up, it was no easy task to jump across the gap without a stable launch point. Maybe a few bites from the fruit of the neighbor's Pitosaurum tree would give him the extra energy to finally reach the bird feeder. Finally, like a modern day Tarzan swinging through the jungle, Wimpy made it over to the bird feeder. What he didn't know was the new squirrel shield had arrived and it was guaranteed to stop his bird seed raids. But Wimpy was just too amusing to send away, so it was down to the workshop to build a squirrel cafe. With the squirrel feeder mounted on the fence, the last step was to replace the bottle shield with an 18 inch diameter cone. Surely this would be elegant enough to please the wife and restore domestic tranquility to the garden. Wimpy was soon a big fan of the squirrel cafe with its expanded menu of walnuts, filberts, almonds, and pecans. Now he and the birds could feed independently as long as I could supply enough food. Soon, Wimpy began taking the pecans to the neighbor's yard and burying them. So what's a physicist to do with a squirrel like that? Mm -hmm. 